As I've said before, homemade puddings to me are really one of the simple pleasures in life. I love to make homemade pudding because it really is so much more delicious and a lot more flavorful than any box you may be used to. And this butterscotch pudding is gonna blow your mind. If you think you enjoy the box or bought in butterscotch pudding, this is gonna take it to a whole new level and really make this dish an adult delicacy that you will want time and again. A while back, I made a homemade chocolate pudding for our basics, and this butterscotch was suggested by Susie Q, and I am so glad that you asked for this, Susie, because it is one of my favorites too. So I can't wait for you to try this recipe. To start, just put a few tablespoons of sugar into a heavy bottom saucepan. You want to make sure to use a large kettle that has a nice wide bottom so you can really start to melt the sugar. Over a medium to medium high heat, just let that sugar melt and then it will start to turn amber fairly quickly. You want to watch it really closely here because sugar can go from a nice amber color to way too dark in a hurry, so just be diligent and really watch the pot. Once it's at its nice dark amber color, and this is where all the flavor for the butterscotch comes from, so it's a crucial step, take it off the heat and add some heavy cream. It will really bubble and the sugar will harden into a mess and you'll think you're completely messed up and have to start over, but don't worry, that's exactly how it should look. You wanna have these clumps of sugar, that just means it hardens, but just stir it and then place it over a lower heat until it's completely smooth again and the sugar will re-melt into the cream. Don't worry. Once your sugar is remelted into the cream, you just want to add some good whole milk, and it really does make a difference here to use whole milk because it just makes it all the more creamy and delicious. It's worth it. And some sugar that's mixed with a little bit of flour. This is just going to help thicken it. Whisk those in and bring them over a medium to medium high heat again. On heat, keep stirring until it becomes thickened. And you can tell that it will really kind of thicken fairly quickly and just keep stirring it until it's thickened. Once it becomes thick, you can add a small amount of baking soda. I know it sounds like a weird addition, but just a small amount makes a big difference here and stir it in until it's incorporated. For the next step, I like to just pull off the heat for a little bit because it really can get too done otherwise. So in a separate bowl, you wanna have three egg yolks and just kind of break them up. To them, you wanna add just a little bit more of your dark brown sugar. Dark brown sugar makes all the difference here. It's really just sugar that's mixed with molasses, but the molasses adds such a deep flavor and really complements the butterscotch flavor. Whisk that into the yolks, and then go back over to the stove with your pudding. You wanna temper your egg yolks just so they don't cook. So slowly ladle a little bit of your pudding mixture into your egg yolks and be whisking them to bring them up to temperature. And then add them all back into the pot. Once the yolks are added back in, put it back over the heat and keep whisking until it's thickened to the right consistency. This really is whatever you enjoy. I like a thicker pudding, so I cook mine until some bubbles just start appearing throughout the pudding. Once it's thick, pull it off, and this is when you add your end flavors. I love to finish it with a little bit of molasses. This just really heightens that deep flavor and it gives it a great undertone. And some vanilla bean paste. And I know we don't all have vanilla bean paste, and I really do think it adds an extra special flavor, and if you don't have it, you can use extract, but if you want to splurge, I would go for the vanilla bean paste. And then to just make it all the more smooth and creamy at the end, a little bit of butter. Let that just melt into the mixture, and then I like to strain it to make sure it's completely smooth and any clumps can come out. Sometimes when you add the flour in, a few clumps can come by in your pudding, and just to finish it at the end and make sure you have a smooth outcome, you can just pass it through a strainer and then you'll have no problem. Place a piece of plastic rack right over the top to make sure it doesn't get a skin, or I know some of you mentioned in the comments of my last pudding that you love the skin, and hey, if that's your thing, let it develop and enjoy. Put it in the fridge and make sure it chills completely before serving. Like with my other pudding, this can be a great pie filling, but really, I think once you make it, you're gonna see why you will have none left to make a pie with. You are gonna be eating it by the spoonful from the bowl like I do. It is so delicious. It's a great dessert or snack, and I know you're gonna be making this for your family soon. If you like this video, please leave a comment and let me know how it worked out for you. I really do love to read them, and then it gives me great ideas to inspire you even further. 
If you want more great videos, click subscribe and you will be part of the Gray Boxwood family. I can't wait to see you again.